Hi. I have no beard. I got attacked by a lady with two kids who wanted to see what I look like without a beard. So now you're going to see my second chin. But anyways, I got a cool video. Uh, I can now do sublimation in-house. So I done, this was my very first sublimation and I formed it into a holster. It held up well. I'm pretty excited about that. Here's number two. That came out pretty good as well. Black is holding up very good. And number three, thin blue line with a um, German Shepherd on it. So I did those and then I had a request for another uh, specialty print. So I'm going to do, like I said, everything in house. So now I don't have to go online and order it from the websites I usually know, uh, order it from and then wait a week or two or three or anything like that. And you don't have to explain to them, you know, oh, it's going to be a right hand inside the waistband holster. So I need the image bottom left uh, this size and you don't have to explain it. You just do it. Now, I am doing it in house. So I'm now making my own. This is the second one I had to do. The first one, I had this guy over here. I messed it up and I realized, ah, oh, that would work for a left hand inside the waistband. So I got to remember, you got to reverse it. So anyways, so this is going to be going right here. We're doing a uh, Glock 17 Poly 80 with the TLR7 on it. It's going to be an inside the waistband right hand. And we're going to put this image right here. So it's already printed. It's already infused on the Kydex. So we're going to go ahead and block this out, heat this up, and press it. And I cannot believe my last video was literally 10 days ago. So I'm sorry for that. But I hope you got to uh, catch up on all my other videos. But let's get to going. Like I said, if I'm not doing videos, I am working. And I got to tell you, my uh, order pile went from about this thick to about this thick. So I did well over half my orders uh, and I'm still trucking. But let's do a video. First things first. Let's block this puppy out. Now, this is a Cook's mold. A lot of controversy with Cook's molds. They, believe it or not, they are not the best out there. Uh, I only do Cook's molds if they're the only ones available at that time. Oh, excuse me. I only do Cook's molds if they're available at that time. So I had to do this one. Luckily, this one is in spec. It was made good and I haven't had an issue with it so far. So knock on wood. Um, Cook's molds, which is the yellow molds, um, sometimes they bend very easily and they don't go back in shape. Sometimes they are out of spec. Uh, but I have confirmed this one is uh, in working order. So I mounted our flashlight on there, TLR7, and let's get some of our blocking and go to town. So if you know I have a different size blocking i just did a holster for an hk so let me pull this off of here um i get all my blocking at home depot so looks like that's going to be just perfect so we're going to use these i also have ones that aren't as wide which i had to make for um a smith and wesson job so which is good because the more odd jobs you get the more you get to figure out what size you need so like that one would also work good as well but it's not going to block up there so we'll do that and that'll block everything out that's going to be our retention and that's going to be our retention so uh the tlr7 has retention on two spots it's either right behind this or believe it or not it's right here and generally when you do the vac forming they have a combination of the two but i like to come off of this guy so that is what we're going to do so we're going to place this there that looks good yep, we're gonna use this one on the side i like that so let's lock that down but before i do that let's do the other there we go let's do the top of the slide there you go ahead and get a nice crisp line and then with leaving this up I'll line that up to it just put that right there get that off and then do a small piece of tape right here 
and then we'll lock that in place. Now, again, like I always say, if you're doing somebody else's property, as in you're borrowing their flashlight, make sure you tape the flashlight underneath your blocking. If you're using metal blocking, you will uh, scratch it and some people don't like scratches on their stuff. So just keep that in mind. All right, now we're gonna do this side. That one is going to be this one. Line that up where we want it. Right, bam, cool. And like I said, this is inside the waistband, so we are going to have to do a foamy attachment. One and three quarter foamy, no cant, RMR cut, and that was Blackbeard's flag, and then no quarter on the foamy. So this is Blackbeard's, so that's gonna be on there. And right-handed, so it's gonna go over here. And with no cant, we're gonna grab this particular guy, and a piece of squished dowel. So that was a dowel. It did look like this at one point, and it is severely squished, and it works perfectly. So let's get this. It stops sticking to me. Let's see here. Right there is good. One this way. All right, now, this is one thing that you're going to have to take in consideration. Grab a foamy. And we're going to have to remember, let's see, you need another piece for blocking. Once you put this down here, where this lands is where it comes in contact, obviously, with your pants. So, by having this here, if you notice right here, there is no, there's a gap. So when you are uh, putting it on your pants and you go to dry your weapon, there's a possibility that it is going to fly off because it's not making uh, direct contact. You want as much as this as possible to make contact with the holster. Otherwise, there is a chance that you're going to pull it off. And to do that, what I'll do is I will take a piece like that right there, which actually would work out better. Let's grab this. So let's pull all this off. Instead of using this, I'm gonna put that right next to it. And that will allow the foamy, not the foamy, yeah, the foamy to land right on it. So it's gonna go underneath. And this is one and three quarters, so let's see here. It's one and three quarters, so we know where it lands, which is a little bit further, right there. So I'm going to take this and lock that in place right there, because our foamy is going to land right here. And that'll still allow um, retention right there, but it looks like we're going to use this guy again. Perfect. Now let's lock all this in place one more time. And I'm going to have to make a um, retention plate for this because I don't have one already made. I believe this is my first time doing this setup. So, let's see. Put that back in place. Alright. All 
right. Next is going to be the retention plate. So let me go grab that wood and then we'll make a outline of it and cut it out. All right, so let's take you on the steps and making a retention plate. Very, very easy, very, very simple. Literally nothing to it. Line up your sight channel with the edge and literally just trace around it. Leave yourself your retention area and if you want you could trim it as well so we're going to trim it there so this is a g17 poly 80 with tlr7 let's cut it I'm going to hold it in the center and then fold over my tape and go ahead and tape it at the muzzle. This is where your dad bod comes in handy. Take my widest tape. Stand it up and then fold it over. By doing this, we make it so the kydex does not go underneath and then cause havoc on the holster. All right, so let's heat this up and see how it goes. But what I'm gonna do first I'm going to mark the area that's in. So I know it's there. All right. Well, that's heating up. Check this out. I have uh, sublimation signs. I do a lot of vinyl uh, images on the signs. So I decided to try sublimation. This is what I got. Did a little Trump with a gold M60 in the White House. Pretty lady with the car. And then I did a couple old school like Mopar uh, ads from dealerships and then I just tried that out. So it's not too bad. These are metal aluminum signs. And yeah, they're pretty, pretty slick. So I can go ahead and uh, put whatever I want on them now. And so I offer those as well. But it's pretty, pretty cool. So I'll do a video eventually on the sublimation, but let's get that in there. While that's in the press, I wanna show you guys something. If you don't know yet, I started another channel called Faltac Garage on YouTube, and what I do is I post this stuff. So a uh, couple nights this past week, it's been pouring for about nine days straight here. And uh, I figured, it's, you know, between 12 o'clock in the morning and pretty much 3 a.m. is when I've been working till uh, I've been working on these guys. So here is a quick update on these. If you want more videos and more information on these guys, follow my other uh, or subscribe to my other page. And what I'm going to do is literally step by step what I'm doing. Uh, I haven't added to it in a little bit, but I did start the channel. It's at like 60 followers or something right now. I literally just started it. So if you're into cars and you want to watch this numbers matching 70 Cuda build and this 54 Buick chop top, let me know because I'm going to, uh, I'll put a link in the description for that. But once I hit a thousand subscribers on there, which we're at almost 4,200 on this channel, but once we hit a thousand, then I could change it up and do a few things on there that it doesn't allow you to do until you have enough. So check this out. So I went ahead and removed all glass from the CUDA because what I have to do is I got to do a new vinyl top, which means I got to sand this all down, prep it, glue it, and I got to sand all in here and make that all pretty again because the vinyl top stops right here and then it's held in place by all the clips and screws that hold the molding in. And this is the drip rail, so I had to clean all that up, but I found a little rust hole. So, and I think you can see, yeah, all this is glue. 
but I am gonna have to cut this out and weld a new piece in. So uh, yeah, we'll have to do that. And then the back window is pretty good. Got my mop balls to keep uh, little critters out. But this looks pretty good back here, other than looks like there's a little bit of rot here. And the people that owned this car before me 40 years ago never fixed this. So I'm gonna have to chop this out and put a new one in, which is no big deal. And as far as this guy goes, all of this, you, can, you can't really see that. It's all padding right here. It's all insulation. I have to get that out before I could weld all that. Because if you haven't figured out, when you put hot stuff next to flammable stuff, it'll catch on fire. So I'm good. Look at that other chin. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to this. So I'm going to be using uh, some of the sheet metal I have here to do that. But like I said, this is the main guy. I want this going to Carlisle next year. And if you want more information and to follow this build, like I said, just go to youtube.com, find Faltac Garage, and you'll be able to follow it. Back to holsters. Looks flipping sweet. Flip it. Bam. Right where I wanted it. So I'm pretty happy about that. So, everything else is normal. Open it up. And ripping everything off. And like always, match it on top. See where your trigger guard ends. Put that in there. Now this is going to have a full sweat shield. So come up, and then it's also RMR cut. Just look in the mold to see where the um, ejection port is. All right, and then. A retention is right here right there would be the retention so I like to do a screw in front and a screw behind and then this is just gonna go up like so and then down all right I'll cut those and can't forget Let's drill. that you need this is looking great we're actually doing a custom foamy on here and luckily it's a one and three quarter because I'm waiting on my delivery of one and a half I ended up finishing or using them off before they got here because FedEx decided not to show up it's also been raining for about nine days straight and with the one break I was able to chop down a tree and then that was it all right let's clean this up a little bit Sublimation seems like it's holding up well. All right. And we're taking our Noga RC2000. We'll go ahead and deburr our inside. Okay. 
and let's get our hardware. All right, so we need four of those, two of these. Open those. Actually, I like. We'll need two of those as well. That's it. All right, sew this together and see how our retention is. Load in our quarter inch. And these are 0.4375 or uh, 7/16, I believe. And the ones for the foamies, these are uh, 3 eighths with quarter inch and quarter inch. Check this out. I like that. I will adjust it just a hair tighter. So again, if you notice, you get something pointy here. This right here is one side of the retention and that right there is the other. And having the retention screws on one side and the other gives you this. That feels good. I like it. I think he'll like it. And we'll go, go from there. So let's get the one and three quarter foamy and let's put the image on it. here all purdied up <laughs> I'm actually excited for this theme I got another one coming up soon that's um, Harry Potter and I already did the uh, custom prints I was waiting on um, oh, what is it called safety yellow to come in I only found one company that had it in stock so I got that ordered in and ooh wee all right so there is our no quarter. Man, she's pretty. Hell yeah. Enjoy, fellas. Nine days. Yay. Sure is pretty though. <laughs>